Yo ho ho! So this evening I'm going to be doing a review on The Room by Hubert Selby Jr. So to give you a brief synopsis, this all takes place in a prison cell. The protagonist who goes unnamed throughout the entire novel, but I have my theories as to who he actually is and I'll get into that later on. He has nothing but time to reflect upon his life and plot his revenge for those who he believes had him falsely imprisoned. His view on himself is quite peculiar. Often he seems to think that he is a victim of the judicial system. He believes that he was imprisoned by by the police officers who were the ones to commit the heinous crime themselves and very early on we establish that he is not a reliable narrator. Ultimately in the end it's down to the reader to decide whether he's guilty or not. Starting out he leads you to believe that he is a somewhat normal person, someone who goes by the rules in the prison etc but quickly it develops into his fantasies and his fantasies of revenge and the stories from his childhood and his youth and an incredibly disturbing story starts to unfold and you realise he is someone who does have violent tendencies, who thinks in a really disgusting way. So how are we to believe him that he claims that he's innocent when he has all these delusions and sick twisted fantasies and at a certain point you can't tell if he's reflecting on a memory or if he's completely imagining it. And a lot of the story is told in that sense where you can't discern whether it's reality or not. And it goes to show his mental state and I think that was really well depicted in this. The story is mostly told through an inner monologue. It jumps from first person to third person and the writing style, as usual with Selby, is incredibly creative and unique. The first person dialogue often interrupts the third person dialogue and it will begin halfway across the page as if the narrator is interrupting himself, as if he's interrupting his frame of thought and by doing this he's commanding the reader's attention, he's demanding to be listened to. Selby is really good at creating a solid foundation for his characters. With this, the first person dialogue has plenty of spelling errors and grammatical errors to help show you like where he's coming from, to show a lack of education. And it is something that may get on some people's nerves when reading it, but I feel like it works really well and Selby often does it. I recall watching an interview with Hubert Selby Jr. a couple of years ago and he said that he didn't know where he got his stories from. They just came through him, basically saying that it's some sort of higher power or whatever that's actually writing the stories. And though, like, I understand, you know, that's a lot of artists will say like, oh, I don't know where it came from, it just happened. It's also a really great way to skirt responsibility in an interview when you're being asked how you could come up with something so horrific and violent and truly disturbing. One of the reoccurring things that happens in this is the fact that the narrator has a boil pimple thing on his face like right under his eye in a really sensitive area and he continually tries to pop it throughout the novel but he can't because the pain literally brings tears to his eyes and I thought it was really interesting that he himself can't deal with just the simple pain of popping a spot yet he can inflict an incredible amount of pain upon many other living creatures and not feel bad about it at all. So this book has a lot of food for thought in it. It's a book that I've read about five months ago now and I still think about it regularly. It still bothers me. While I was reading it, it was able to successfully get into my head. I felt that I was in the cell with him, watching him. The memories that he reflects upon and the fantasies, it was just so vivid it was it was it was as if you were watching a movie and there were certain points that i put this novel down because i just i couldn't deal with the level of violence in it and that's something that doesn't usually happen to me normally i can read violence and gore and things with no problem but there's a certain chapter in this that contains animal abuse and it actually goes on for a bit it's more than one chapter as well as the chapter that describes the crime that he commits allegedly uh, those were the two that I had a really hard time getting through and I felt that basically like ripping off a band-aid I just sat down and read through it and tried to get through it as fast as possible not speed reading but you know I was taking everything in you know this book made me feel really uncomfortable it made me upset I had to put it down for weeks at a time because I just couldn't deal with it and even though it stirred up all these negative emotions in me, I'm not going to say that it's a bad book because at the end of the day, a good writer makes you feel and it doesn't matter what they make you feel. All those emotions got stirred up in me. That means that this is a good book. 
I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I would recommend it for those of you who are brave enough to give it a go. It's definitely not for everyone. If you do not like violence, don't read this. If you're someone who's more on the sensitive side, this is certainly not for you, but it would be for someone who enjoys just really dark novels. So that has been my review on The Room by Hubert Selby Jr. Let me know if you've read this or if you're going to try to attempt to read this and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. My theory is on who the narrator is, is that he is the police officer named Harry. Now Hubert Selby Jr. names all his lead characters Harry in every book, every book. And uh, the reason why he does this is because I think he knew a woman who referred to John's as Harry's and he thought that that was really kind of unique and so he decided just to use Harry as the name of his characters. So my theory is that the narrator may be this Harry police officer. I don't believe that he actually is a police officer though. I feel like that might be like a vision of grandeur for himself as he's already displayed that he has those ideals about him that he's so much better than he actually is. So let me know if you have any theories on it, if you think I might be on the right track with this or if you just completely disagree with me.